Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, April 10th, 2013. Please join us in welcoming our host for today, Alderman Ricardo Munoz of the 22nd Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you for having me. Political Forum is a live interactive show brought to you as a community service for CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN, board, a CAN TV board member. During the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your questions. So if you have any questions for Alderman Munoz, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman Munoz, please tell us about yourself. Yes, well, uh, thank you for having me and thank you for the invitation to talk a little bit about what we do in the ward and the ward itself. Uh, but uh, I, I'm the alderman of the 22nd Ward and I've been the alderman there since January of 1993 and I love my job because I get to help people. Uh, we have uh, embarked on a basically a mission to improve the neighborhood in every way we see that it's necessary and one of the things that for example uh, when I graduated from eighth grade in 1979 from Robert Burns Elementary which is on 25th and Central Park my eighth grade math class was in a hallway. When I became the alderman in 1993 and I visited Robert Burns Elementary, th those eighth graders were still in the hallway. So we made it our mission to relieve the overcrowding problem uh, in, in Little Village and we're able to fight for the building of five new grammar schools and one new high school, all within two miles, just to relieve the issue of overcrowding uh, in the neighborhood. And, 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 and that's been just a, uh, a monumental task of being able to say that with the building of Finco, Madero, Little Village Academy, Jose Ortiz de Dominguez and Zapata, five new grammar schools, and the Little Village Londale High School at 31st and Costner, uh, we've been able to basically rejuvenate the neighborhood. And also with the expansion of uh, Tomen Branch Library, which used to be a 4,000 square foot library, really small, uh, into a 20,000 square foot library, now with its own parking lot and its own facilities, its Wi-Fi, uh, and the building of a new library at 23rd and Kedzie, uh, those are all accomplishments that help build uh, the infrastructure in the neighborhood that make it a better neighborhood, that make make it a neighborhood where people want to live and want to raise their children, and that's why I get to. Uh, that's why I love my job because I get to help people and I get to build stuff. Great. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of schools. Um you know, with the issue of school closings, can yes. you talk about about that a little bit? Yeah, it's 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 really sad uh, that we are having this conversation uh, about why schools need need or need not to close, uh, and all politics are local, so I have to talk about Paderewski. Uh, Paderewski Elementary School is a school at Cermak and Londo that's in my ward that's slated for closing. And just last night I was at a, a public hearing with the Board of Education advocating uh, for that school not to close uh, for a couple of reasons. One is the neighborhood there is isolated because it's bound by some railroad tracks in Ogden Avenue in some uh, commercial area uh, where the children were going to have to cross Ogden Avenue to go to the receiving school, uh, to go to the other schools that they're being recommended. And the two schools that are the receiving schools are already at or about capacity. So we're talking about taking 171 students from Paderewski and putting them in an overcrowded situation. And, and, and that, of course, doesn't make sense. That's why I'm advocating for Paderewski to remain open because it's the only fair thing to do for the students that currently attend Paderewski so that we don't overcrowd the other two schools, which are Castellanos and Cardenas. Thank you, Alderman. You're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive show. If you have any questions for the Alderman, or comments, please call us at 312-738-1060. Um, Alderman, I'm going to be showing um, the viewers uh, the second ward uh, map. Um, is this the current map after the redistricting? No, this is the pre-redistricting map, and it's the map that was designed in 2001 after the 2000 census. Uh, so for the next election, uh, there will be some territory that's added. But roughly the ward is from Kedzie on the east to the city limits on the west, Cermak Road on the north, and the Stevenson Expressway on the south. So it's the neighborhoods of North Londo and Little Village. Uh, as a result of redistricting, uh, I will be going into the neighborhoods of Vidham Park and Leclerc Hurst and Sleepy Hollow down by 47th and Cicero 
where because the city lost population, most of the wards had to grow geographically. So I had to pick up some uh, some territory, some some precincts, uh, some blocks down by 47th and Cicero, uh, by all the way to Laramie and the city limits uh, in order to make sure that our wards are balanced. Uh, so I, like I said, I've been alderman now since 1993, and uh, all of my career representing the Little Village North Lawndale community, uh, loving the job because in my job I get to help people uh, with their homes, I get to help people with their jobs, I get to help people with their community needs, and as I mentioned earlier, we get to build stuff, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that's very much necessary for our neighborhood, you know, like libraries, like police stations, uh, like schools, uh, and then and like the new high school at uh, 31st and Costa that we were able to build. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but back in 2001 uh, a group of uh, mothers had to actually go on a hunger strike to demand that that school be uh, constructed and went on a hunger strike and f ultimately convinced the Board of Education and the mayor's office that that school needed to be built. Today it's a beautiful campus at 31st and Costner uh, for uh, 1500 students and it's kinda like the example of how best to build new high schools uh, here in, uh, in in the city of Chicago. Alderman, we have a caller on the line. Yeah, I see we have a few callers. Caller, what's your question? Hello. Hello. Please, yes. tell us what is your question, caller. Yes, my comment, I have a comment. Yes. To the alderman. Go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, yes. Uh, School closing. I believe the school is closing because uh, the gentrification of the, of the family is moving out to the city of Chicago because of the cost of living throughout the city. And that has a lot to do with the school closing and why it was not overcrowded. Same thing with the re, re, remap of, of the alderman, uh, remap of the, of the ward. So that's why we have all this going on. And plus, um, the mayor and everybody should know what's going on. I remember the home home was struck with the with the parents to get there. I remember that down at the board. But um I remember you all I mean, you've been around a long time so I appreciate what you do but thank you. Anyway, um that's that's a serious problem right there. Thank you, caller, for that comment. I believe we have another caller on the line. Uh yes, to continue the uh, school closings theme, uh there's a lot of talk uh, around talking about the school closings being a uh, Kind of racist in nature, a lot of African American students would be affected. Uh, Alderman, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, I think it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Uh, we were talking just earlier about uh, the adverse impact that it uh, that it's creating. Uh, the statistics are such that you know African Americans make roughly about 44, 45 percent of the student body uh, of the Board of Education of the public school systems. Yet they make over 85 percent of those affected by the school closings. So there's obviously uh, an adverse impact there uh, that uh, needs to be looked at, and it looks like it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Sí, buenas tardes, concejal Muñoz. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Tengo una pregunta. ¿Cuáles son las preparaciones que están tomando para evitar tanta violencia en la 26, en la Villita, este verano? Yes, the question is what are we doing to uh, re reduce or prevent the violence on 26th Street in the Little Village. Uh, muchas gracias por la pregunta. Uh, estamos trabajando arduamente con las escuelas y con los clubs de cuadra uh, y el Departamento de Policía para poder prevenir el crimen. Este año pasado se instalaron cámaras uh, alrededor de todas las escuelas y todos los parques para tratar de prevenir el crimen y no estar reaccionando. Uh, lo importante es de que los vecinos se um, involucren y estén envueltos en las comunidades, eh, en sus comunidades, en sus cuadras. Una de las cosas que nosotros impulsamos bastante durante la primavera y el verano es uh, los clubs de cuadra para que los vecinos se conozcan. Muchas veces los vecinos se conocen como el dueño del carro rojo o la, la abuelita del pandillero, pero no, no se conocen como la señora Jiménez, el señor Martínez. Y los clubs de cuadra nos ayudan a hacer nuestros ojos y oídos para prevenir el crimen. 
roughly, uh, sh uh, I'll translate uh, mm -hmm. that to English uh, real quick, in mm -hmm. that uh, there's a very good question of what we're doing to prevent violence. Uh, violence uh, prevention uh, has to come from a, in, in a holistic approach, uh, in working with the police department to make sure that they're doing their job, in working with uh, neighbors and block clubs and the CAPS uh, advisory councils to make sure that we're preventing crime. Uh, for example, last uh, summer we installed uh, cameras around all the parks and schools in the neighborhood to try and prevent the crime. In working with neighbors, one of the things that we do uh, very effectively in the spring and summer uh, is we encourage people to develop black clubs because a lot of times neighbors know each other as the driver of the red car or the grandma of the gang banger, uh, but don't know each other as Mr. Martinez, Ms. Caldwell, Mr. Washington, uh, Mr. Linares, and uh, that way when neighbors know each other and come together as a black club, we're able to prevent the crime and not necessarily just react to it. So uh, our approach to reducing violence, to preventing violence is a holistic one, and that's why I earlier mentioned the construction of these new schools, using the schools as community centers after school programs are very important and make sure that during those key hours between three and seven because that's when the children are alone at home uh, that they're kept in the school building and they're kept busy whether it's with a soccer club a photography club a karate club uh, any sort of activity uh, and making sure that those activities are there to prevent the violence uh, gracias por esa llamada thank you for that call caller um, Alderman, you've been in office for 20 years. Yes. <laughs> um, how is this year different from previous years? Uh, every year is different because every year brings d new challenges. And one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, about why I love my job is we get to build stuff. Uh, and building these schools, these libraries, these police stations, but we're actually uh, embarked, we've actually embarked on the, the uh, a new revitalization project of the corner of 31st and Kedzie. At 31st and Kedzie, we used to have uh, Washburn Trade School, which was demolished four years ago, uh, and today we're working with the city and St. Anthony Hospital uh, in building a brand new hospital right there at 31st and Kedzie with a park adjacent to it. So they would have a basketball court, skate park, a soccer field, and some uh, some retail. So this year we've been focusing on how to make that a reality. How to help St. Anthony go from a 95-year-old building at 19th and Sacramento to a new uh, state-of-the-art building at 31st and Kedzie. Uh, and the city is uh, actually selling them the property for a dollar so that they're able to afford the construction. It's a $400 million project. Uh, that is going to create over 2,500 construction jobs and well over 1,200 permanent jobs at the hospital plus another 600 jobs in the retail center. So uh, every year is different. This year we're focused on that and we're also focused on the reuse and redevelopment of the old Keating Project, Keating Building at 26th and Co and uh, uh, 26th Street and Costner where it's an old building where they used to make uh, industrial stoves. Hmm. And we're taking the building and redefining it, redesigning it to be first floor uh, commercial and then 140, 144 apartments, uh, mixed use apartments on the second, third and fourth floors right there at the western end of 26th Street. So every year is different. Uh, this year we do have uh, all of our summer activities that we're planning with the block parties and the parades and the festivals. St. Agnes, uh, which is the parish I belong to, holds this August Fest every second weekend of August that takes a lot of planning. Uh, so although we do a lot of the same things every year, uh, every year is different and every year is new and exciting. Okay, we have another caller. Caller, what is Hello. your question? Alderman? Yes. Yeah, I quería saber este por qué hacen leyes y no las no las siguen, you know? Este they don't enforce the laws that they use make, okay? And other other thing también lo que quería decir es el double dipping de los police department de, de policía que están trabajando dos trabajos uno están trabajando security y otro están trabajando este el the police department y y ya este cuando es tiempo de hacer el trabajo de ellos no lo están haciendo bien porque están cansados y cuando le hablan a la policía para que respondan a esa llamada que vino o que vayan a dar ticket a este o algo así importante no están haciendo su trabajo can we stop ese double dipping y no nomás eso pero este los 
los eh, I know, antes eh, años antes cuando empezaste apenas de Alderman este tenían clean up graffiti y todo eso Sí, uh, todavía tenemos esos programas de, para remover el graffiti uh, y es interesante que hable sobre la, los diferentes trabajos que tienen los policías. Primero y primordialmente su trabajo es de ser policía, uh, por eso tienen esas responsabilidades uh, y lo importante es de que entonces trabajemos con la comunidad y los clubes de cuadra para prevenir el crimen. Gracias por esa llamada. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Oh, yeah, I know you're talking about schools already, but I have another question about that. I, I thought I remember reading some reports that talking about class sizes getting up to 30 or even 40 kids. I mean, is that acceptable? Have you guys heard any studies about that? And, and what do you think the real final numbers will look like? Study after study after study have indicated that the smaller the class size, the more likely the student is to be successful. Uh, so that's why uh, I'm opposed to the closing of Paderewski because it'll take the students from Paderewski and put them in an overcrowded situation over at Cardenas and Castellanos and increasing the number, uh, increasing the class size at Castellanos and Cardenas. Uh, that's why I'm, that's one of the reasons why I'm opposed to the closure of Paderewski. I agree with you that class size is super important and anybody who's ever taught in a classroom uh, will tell you that it's a lot easier uh, to deal with 22, 23, 25 students than it is to deal with 35, 40 students and that's why uh, we need to make sure that we keep those class sizes reasonable. Thank you Carla for that question. You're watching Political Forum. This is a community service brought to you by CAN TV. It's a live interactive show, so if you have any questions for Alderman Muñoz, please call us at 312-738-1060. I do got to say that I'm very impressed that some of the callers are calling in Spanish uh, and uh, they feel comfortable enough to, 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 uh, to actually ask their question in Spanish. Y me da mucho gusto de que la gente que está viendo, los televidentes, uh, se sienten confortables en hablar y hablar en español y hacer su pregunta. Uh, so I got to congratulate CAN uh, TV uh, for opening up that new audience because this is the first time I'm here that we actually have Spanish speaking uh, questions on, on the callers. Has that happened before? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're bilingual, so uh, we we'll, encourage we'll, all, we'll you know, languages calls. to call in. I'm going to be showing you, um, again, the contact information for Alderman Ricardo Munoz. His office is located at 2500 South St. Louis. Um, his phone number is 773-762-1771. And his email is ward22 at cityofchicago.org. Alderman, what are your priorities for this year? Um, we are uh, focused on making sure that we have a safe summer, uh, focused on making sure that all of our s church festivals, because St. Agnes has a festival, as I mentioned earlier, August Fest, and then Epiphany and Good Shepherd also have their own festivals uh, in planning those festivals and making sure that they go off well, that the neighbors uh, are respected. Um, and then organizing black clubs. Uh, we, our priority every spring and summer is to try and organize at least 20 to 25 new black clubs uh, to make sure that people know each other, to make sure that people are talking about the issues that are important to them on their block, uh, to make sure that uh, we create phone trees, for example. Uh, it's uh, amazing how uh, we, in this day and age with technology, some neighbors don't know their neighbors' phone numbers. And you don't have to memorize them, you just have to put them on your, uh, in, in your directory. And then that way, when something happens on the block, people can communicate. Uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, but we encourage phone trees because we use the phone trees to hold the police department accountable. Because when something's happening on the block and you call the police, you want to make sure that two or three or four neighbors call the police to make sure that the police are responding. Because we also want to make sure that the police are held accountable to be doing their job in our neighborhood uh, and giving them as much information as possible. One of the things, one of the uh, skits that I do at, at, at the block club meetings is we talk a little, little bit about when somebody calls 911, don't get mad if the operator asks you for the plates of the car. Even though you weren't able to see them, just tell them I didn't see them. But their job is to try and get as much information as possible after an incident, and that's why uh, we encourage people to give us as much information. For example, if you're calling in about three or four knuckleheads that are on the corner, tell us... <clears throat> 
tell us that one of them is wearing a white hat with black gym shoes. Because when the police show up on the scene and they see the white hat and the black gym shoes, they know who that knucklehead is. And they go straight for him or her uh, on, on, on who's doing the, uh, the illegal activities. And those are the things that we talk about during the block club meetings. Uh, those are the things that we talk about during community meetings where we want people to become involved. And our priority right now is to make sure that we plan for a safe summer. Um, Alderman, you mentioned um, the roles of the churches in the community. Um, now there is a new law that um, non-for-profits oh, yes. have to pay for um, their water bill. Water. Uh, what has been the impact um, of this change in the law? Yeah, one of the things that the Emanuel administration put forward uh, during the last budget season was an elimination of the uh, free water program for non-for-profits and churches. And it passed the city council. Uh, and we are now feeling the effects because these churches, these community-based organizations that are not-for-profit, I mean, they're not making a gazillion dollars and they're not getting rich. They're providing much-needed services, sometimes after-school programs, sometimes, sometimes summer uh, internship programs. Uh, I know of an organization that uh, does community development uh, that is now going to, going to have to pay their water bill. We're starting to feel that pain uh, in, in the neighborhood. So there's a group of us, a group of aldermen that have met with the churches, that have met with the not-for-profits, and trying to figure out uh, how we can best alleviate, best mitigate this problem. Because if you're asking an organization that has an annual budget of $100,000, $120,000 with one and a half staff to pay $8,000 in the water bill, it just doesn't make sense, especially if they're providing good programs. So we're looking for alternatives. Uh, this does add up to about $20 million a year uh, that we would have to find in the city budget to try and ameliorate, to try and fix this problem. Uh, but we're working with the churches, we're working with the community-based organizations to try and figure that out. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, please tell us, um, how was the city council meeting today? Uh, it was interesting. There was a couple of things happening in the city council. Uh, we passed uh, a couple of laws that uh, increased the fines for public urination and public intoxication. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like what you call the broken window approach is that uh, you, 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 you don't want folks to be uh, uh, engaging in these illegal bad activities and then just getting a slap on the wrist. Uh, so uh, that passed today. And one of the other things that passed today was a change in how people pay for their parking tax. Uh, previously, uh, or today, if you go to a parking lot downtown and uh, you, have to, you pay your fee, uh, it's a flat fee. Of uh, if, it's, if, if the charge is more than $12, it's a $5 tax. And now we went to a progressive percentage tax so that the, the less you pay the less you pay tax the more you pay the more you pay tax that's that's a fairer system uh, so that passed today in the city council and then other than that uh, we uh, honored uh, Chicago's uh, basketball legends uh, Chicago basketball uh, stars because we had uh, the Chicago hoops tournament team there uh, which is an all-star uh, group of basketball stars who are today in high school uh, hopefully going on to college so it was very interesting uh, it was a long meeting because we had a lot to do uh, but as usual the city council uh, met and uh, took care of some of the city's business great um, you mentioned progressive um, and there's been talk about progressive caucuses um, can you talk to us a little bit about that in uh, which uh, progressive talk, uh, caucus you're on? Well, uh, for the last 12 years, <clears throat> 12 to 15 years, uh, there's been an informal group known as the Progressive Caucus that met around the budget, that met around public safety issues, uh, that sometimes opposed Mayor Daley and in this case now Mayor Rahm Emanuel. And we decided to formalize that Progressive Caucus. We call it the Chicago Progressive Reform Caucus and it's made up of nine of us in the city council. Uh, and there's another group of aldermen uh, who decided to establish what they call the Paul Douglas Alliance, uh, uh, named after a very progressive uh, activist uh, U.S. Senator from Illinois. And so having those two caucuses there, for me, is a game of addition. It just means more people are you know, aligning themselves with our, with our politics, our ideology of making, it, making the city a more progressive, resident-friendly city. Right. 
Thank you, Alderman Ricardo Munoz, for appearing on Political no, Forum. Th thank you for having me. <clears throat> thank you, viewers, for your calls. Political Forum is a community service brought to you by Can TV. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening.